built into Android is a number of developer options that allow you to go beyond the regular user-facing functionality to get even greater control over your daily experience. And here are some of our top tips to get the most from your Android phone. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So first and foremost, developer options can sometimes be known as developer mode on some Android phones out there. These added controls are somewhat obviously not available right out of the box and designed to let developers, and by extension you, the user, configure system behaviors to help profile and debug app and system performance. And some of them we really do think you might want to take a look at. Before we start though, you'll need to go to settings, system, about phone, tap build number around about seven times. Now enter your pin or pattern to activate this. To access the wider developer options or developer mode, you probably need to head back into settings, system and developer options. From here, we can actually start making tweaks. So let's get into it. When you plug your Android phone into a PC or laptop, there is a predefined process that will run automatically. This can vary from phone to phone, but thanks to Android developer options, you can adjust this to suit your own personal preferences. You can choose between file transfer mode, USB tethering, act as a digital interface for audio with the MIDI function, or picture transfer with PTP mode. You can also set it so that your Android phone doesn't do any transfer or transfer any data at all, and will just charge if that's supported. And this is a real time saver if you only plug in your phone into a computer or laptop to remove files and this can be enabled by heading into settings, system, developer options, and default USB configuration. From here, you can just set up whichever of these first options you prefer, and it will run as soon as you plug your phone into a computer. The default split screen mode in Android is excellent at allowing you to truly multitask on your phone. Sadly though, it doesn't work with every single application for one reason or another. Thanks to a toggle though within the developer options section in Android 12 and Android 13, you can actually force split screen mode even for unsupported applications on your phone or tablet. You might encounter some issues though with unsupported applications, but this is especially useful if as most apps do actually scale accordingly to your screen size anyway. To enable, head to settings, system, developer options, and force activities to be resizable. Even if your phone has a high refresh rate screen, it might not always be running at that maximum rate. You might notice some frame drops here and there where the refresh rate dips to lower speeds. Often this is limited by the applications on your device, but the Android system will do this often to save battery or even improve overall device performance. That said, you might have a 90, 120 hertz, or even a higher refresh rate screen. But thanks to the developer options section within Android, you're able to force your device's peak refresh rate, whatever that happens to be, to be used across the entire area of your system. To enable this, head to settings, system, developer options, now force peak refresh rate and toggle this on. And naturally, your smartphone knows a heck of a lot about you. Some might say too much, but if you're worried about your privacy at certain points, then there is a neat quick toggle to disable all of your on-device sensors, including GPS, microphone, camera, accelerometer, gyroscope, proximity sensor, and even magnometers if they're available. And these will be inaccessible to any app on your phone while this option is toggled. There could be some extra battery benefits here too, but you will lose out on some functionality if you do leave the block in place all of the time. However, we think it's still useful to have access to. To add it to your device or the quick settings panel on your device, just head to settings, system, developer options, quick settings, developer tiles, and find the sensors off option and enable that. This will actually be added to the first position in your quick settings panel or the notification shade, but you can move this to wherever you see fit using the edit button. Mobile data and Wi-Fi are also unaffected by this tile, which is why I think it's a great one to add to your phone anyway. There are tons of applications that need your location for functionality. Some might argue too many. There are tons of apps though out there that allow you to fake your current location, which can be useful for things like games that require location for certain in-game inlocks or features. A prime example is Pokemon Go, or even some streaming apps when you wanna access geo-locked content. You can use location spoofing applications from the Play Store to default to a specified region. And with the developer options tiles too, this means that you can place your Android anywhere on the planet with zero problems. To enable this, head to settings, system, developer options, and now select mock location app. Now you can select your preferred application if you do have one installed. If not, head to the Play Store, find one. Now you should be able to add that to your preferred location application via the developer options. 
Android seems to get a lot of undeserved criticism for the quality and consistency of things like animations and the perceived smoothness of the system. In recent years, things have improved quite dramatically with updates and system uh, UI improvements, but thanks to the enhanced developer options mode, you can tweak your phone's animations if they're too slow or not slow enough for your liking. If you want to tweak animation speed, you'll need to head to settings, system, developer options. From here, you can find three options that you can toggle to improve speed. There is window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. All of these can be tweaked to suit your own preferences, but it's worth noting that 0.5x speed means faster, so smaller numbers actually mean faster animations. But play around with it to see how you find the animations and improve smoothness of your device. Battery life is another big complaint with any smartphone out there and taking steps to potentially increase it is always worthwhile in our mind so long as functionality isn't drastically impaired. One such function that might be worth disabling is Wi-Fi scanning. However, you can keep this enabled for quick Wi-Fi switching but restrict how often scanning processes take place which is something we think you should do. Wi-Fi scan throttling limits background apps from scanning Wi-Fi to once every 30 minutes. Without being activated, this can actually be as much as once every 15 seconds. In our opinion, we think this is a good middle ground if you don't want to disable the Wi-Fi scanning entirely. To enable this, head to Settings, System, Developer Options, and now Wi-Fi scan throttling. A dedicated dark theme or dark mode has been one of the best additions to Android in recent years. It still isn't perfect though, but thanks to a toggle found within developer options, you can force a dark theme even for unsupported Android apps and even certain system sections. As you would expect though, this can be quite buggy. Certain UI portions can become obscured or hard to decipher as a result of using this option. We would say use this functionality with caution as it can make some apps, as we mentioned, difficult to use correctly as you'd expect them to. If you want to enable dark theme everywhere though, or force this, then head to settings, system, developer options, and override force dark. Even when your phone is constantly connected to Wi-Fi, mobile data will actually be active on your device for quick switching between networks. This is great if you're moving between networks on a regular basis, but for most people who tend to stay in one place for a long time, this can affect battery longevity. To disable or enable this function, you can head to settings, system, developer options, and mobile data always active. Now toggle this on or off as you see fit. With this function disabled, it's worth noting that when turning off or disconnecting from Wi-Fi, it can take a couple of seconds before mobile data is available again, but we think this is a worthwhile compromise for some extra battery longevity. Within developer options, you can also manage and monitor any ongoing processes running on your Android phone, including those cache apps which would be found in your recent apps menu. If your phone is running strangely or if you just want to get an idea of what is sapping at your device memory, then this dashboard is a useful place to visit and get a better idea of what's going on. You're able to stop any processes or applications from this pane if you wish. We want to show you this, so head over to settings, system, developer options, and running services. And this will just give you an idea of the current state of your Android phone and what is actually using your memory at any one time. So that's 10 of the developer options or enhanced developer options that we think you should know about. We want to know what you have been using in the developer options section and simply have to enable or disable right away on your Android phone. Is there something you literally cannot live without? Well, let us know down in the comments sections below. Hopefully though, this has helped you eke a little more from your Android phone, but until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.